Now, in this year of the Arab Spring and other calls for change, young people the world over are demanding to be taken more seriously in shaping the future of their nations. We came across one such young woman from Nigeria. I told myself that I didn't want to be one of those who sat down all day and talked and did nothing. And I said to myself that it will almost be criminal if you have a lot of knowledge, you've gone to school, and you, give, you do not give back to, to your society, and you decide to do nothing. So, Constance Koku decided to edit and produce this book, Nigeria, Half a Century of Progress and Challenges. It highlights some of the issues impeding the country's development. Though an accomplished journalist, she recruited some of Nigeria's best respected country men and women, including Finance Minister Ngozi Okonjo Iwela, to write about the country's challenges and possible solutions. We have about 13 chapters. So that means you don't have to go to different books to look at suggestions. It also has some historical basis in one book. So you're talking about a book that looks at security, that looks at uh, human capital development, youth development, emerging leaders. And the most important thing about this book, it is talking about action. How do we actually move forward? Praised internationally for its recent credible election of President Goodluck Jonathan, Nigeria has made strides politically, but Ikoku says her book's authors remind citizens not to become complacent. In spite of the fact that we had a better election this year, that does not mean that it's going to be better in 2015 if you don't work at the institutions that would help you to ensure that people can go to the ballot box, vote, and their votes are counted. Ikoku's book also examines corruption and other critical areas of the country, including religious tensions that have resulted in mass killings, especially in the north, and killings carried out by the Islamic militant group Boko Haram. But the most pressing issue, she says, is Nigeria's economy. She says among the recommendations given is the need for Nigeria to reduce its dependency on oil and diversify to create jobs for the country's many young people driven to crime, she says, because of poverty and idleness. Between now and the next 10 years, if we can diversify and have other products, you know, manufacturing, it's an area that we can go into. Agriculture, we have a lot of fertile land in Nigeria. So the government should maybe create the enabling environment for people to go into all these private areas and begin to become employers of labor. Also to alleviate poverty, Ikoku refers to the chapter addressing the volatile, oil-rich Niger Delta region. The chapter talks about paying more attention to a region which uh, produces more than 90% of the, of the revenues in Nigeria and yet has been neglected over years. Because of the terrain, the, the difficulty. But the chapter is now saying that, yes, it's difficult, but we should be paying attention because at the end of the day, if the world comes out from there and the people do not enjoy their world, and at the same time the environment is totally degraded, then you are saying that they are not part of Nigeria. Ikoku says she would like to see more Nigerians, especially the youth, take more responsibility in advancing Africa's most populous nation. We need to be concerned about Nigeria and what happens to Nigeria in the future. Do we have a future? If we have a future, how do we negotiate it? These are questions that we should ask ourselves and begin to act on them. This book is about action. It's not all about talk because we really need to move forward. Now, as a journalist, Constance Ikoku says she's encouraged by Nigeria's liberal media environment, noting the recent passage of the Freedom of Information Act, which she says is critical for a healthy democracy.